I haven't built a Voron 3D printer in a month. And the last time was live at Earth 2023, which was a very stressful endeavor. So let's change that. Of course, to build a machine, you need parts. That's where this box comes in. The folks over at Fizek sent over this Voron 0.2 kit so we could build it and check it out. They are not sponsoring this video, they just provided the parts so I could give my two cents on them. We're going to build this machine, take a look at some of the unique parts that come with this kit, and I'll give you my opinion on it after having built a couple other budget Voron kits. Is this one the one to buy? Let's find out. Now I've done a handful of Voron Zero builds on this channel, so I'm not gonna do a full step-by-step -step guide here, but I am going to stop and call out anytime a part or a step in the build process of what they call the Fizek Voron 0.2 Pro R1 kit catches my eye. And almost immediately, something did. They include one of their lightweight CNC machined X gantries in this kit, which is a third of the weight of the original regular 1515 extrusion that is spec'd for the Voron Zero, so it should allow for faster acceleration and top speed on this machine. Now mind you, this is not an expensive add-on, but this is only a $500 kit, including the printed parts that came with it. So usually companies are aiming to cut corners anywhere they can to keep their price point down. This costs 20 bucks if you buy it yourself on AliExpress, but a regular extrusion is only a few dollars, so they absolutely, even at their cost, spent a little more to put this in the kit than if they hadn't. Moving forward with the build is as simple as following the Voron design instructions and getting the frames starting to go together. However, it wasn't too long before I found the next part of note, the CNC machined aluminum bed frame. This is like a Kirigami bed, an option for supporting the bed on a Voron V0, meant to be stronger since the cantilever design of the V0 bed can cause some issues. Funny enough, the kit does come with the printed parts and extrusions to assemble the standard Voron V0 bed if you want to, but I don't know why you would want to when you've got this pretty quality feeling component here. It's by no means the lightest component, but the fastest movements of the Z-axis is gonna see is Z-hop movements, so that's really not that big of a deal. And installation is really straightforward onto the rails just as the printed components would go. Then it's back to standard Voron design build process. Put in heat press inserts, assemble shim and bearing stacks, and put together your printed parts and your mechanical parts. I should note something. Overall, the print quality on the parts that were provided seems excellent, but it did not come in blue. All the blue parts are things that I printed because I didn't want another red Voron. All the parts they provided are, of course, red. Speaking of 3D prints, you might have noticed the 3D printed mid panel on this machine. It's got the Voron logo, the Fizek logo, and a bunch of hexagons because they're bestagons. I designed this, but it was heavily inspired by the Zen 3D hex panel that already existed out there. I used that on my 0.1. For updating that to a 0.2, I wanted to tweak the design a bit, so I started from scratch and made my own version of it. As of you folks seeing it in this video, the files are now available for free download on my Thangs page, link in the description. There are three different styles available, the Fizek logo version, the standard version with just the Voron logo, and then an LDO logo version. And there are also then a variation of those where there's a chamber thermistor mount built into it, so you don't need any additional mounting or hardware to get a chamber thermistor into your Voron 0.2. And it requires no additional hardware to get the multicolor effect. You just change your filament at the start of a 0.6 millimeter layer height, and then once again at the start of the 2.2 millimeter layer height, and that is it. You get your color changes. With that out of the way, let's get back to building this little machine. And once again, I have something to call out. These little innocuous blocks of plastic were just in the printed parts box without looking at the Fizek instructions, which are kind of only offhandedly mentioned on one piece of paper in the kit, you wouldn't know that these go into the gantry to accept the hardware to hold the gantry into the machine. So I will link in the description to the GitHub page for this machine so you can find the supplemental instructions you're gonna need to put this together. And overall, I've been impressed with the quality of the prints, but I have run into a few that aren't 
perfect. Both, you know, overhangs being a little funky. That's part of the design of the 0.2. There's a few angles that are a little steeper than I care for on the design, but I just had a major delamination and I have to stop and reprint this part. This front corner here, when I put the B extrusion, the part that goes above the gantry on, it pulled the two ends together and just completely delaminated it it just fully pulled apart there. Now the sentence just before this one was filmed last night, now that I've had a night's sleep on it and I'm looking at these parts in fresh day, I realize they're totally wrong and I 100% cannot recommend buying this kit with printed parts. Looking closer at this failed component, it only has two walls and maybe 10 to 15% infill, which is way outside of the Voron spec for printed parts. They call for four walls and 40% infill. Personally, I'll often do five or six walls on my parts, especially on parts like these idlers where they're not gonna be moving components, so I'm not adding any additional weight to the moving mass. Since I reprinted my accent color pieces for this machine already, I don't have to worry about any of those. So let's break one of these red parts and see how it was printed. Now that I've broken this part apart, I can see inside of there that that is four walls and 40% infill, guesstimating anyway. So this part was printed properly. I don't know what the heck happened with these black parts, but I'm going to get them replaced and now I'm way delayed on this project. So let's get it done. With that, I have a complete Fizek Voron 0.2 blah blah blah. It's complete, it's running, it can print. So let's talk about some of the final parts that went into putting this together and what I actually think of this kit overall. As noted, I did end up reprinting a handful of parts that go to this overall motion system. I reprinted the X gantry parts that go at each end of it. As I installed the previous ones, I noticed a little bit of a cracking sound to them, which told me they were probably as weak as the idler that broke on me. So I just replaced those entirely with fresh printed parts. I've already said I cannot recommend getting this kit with the printed parts, but what about the rest of the pieces that come with this kit? Well, there's some good stuff here. The bed on this machine is a six millimeter thick piece of aluminum with a 75 watt, 24 volt heater unit that goes on the underside of the bed. Getting the bed installed onto that machined aluminum bed frame, that thing is seriously solid and it feels really good and stable. So I am really happy with the choice they made, including that in the kit. Let's move up just a hair and talk about the hot end they included in here. Now, a lot of basic kits include pretty darn bottom of the barrel hot ends like the Seaboard kit I worked with previously. This one, however, came with like a step up from that. It looks like a clone of a Fetus Dragonfly, which feels like an odd choice to me. Sure, it fits the build pretty well, and it actually feels somewhat premium with a plated copper heat block. It includes a plated nozzle in there. It feels pretty good, but oddly it shipped with a Teflon lined heat brake installed. It did come with an all metal heat brake, but that's an odd choice for a Voron Teflon lined heat brake. But all that adds up to a hot end. It's not gonna flow that well, really. There's nothing going for this hot end, not even a clone CHT nozzle. The nozzle they included is super basic. And as such, in real world print testing, I'm finding I'm getting somewhere between 10 to 12 millimeters cubed per second printing ASA filament on this machine, which is really, really average. And on a Voron, that means it's going to be a limiting factor. It's gonna be holding this machine back from really pushing the speeds it could achieve. Moving just past the hot end, we've got the extruder assembly on this thing. Something I was pretty surprised about here, this is the mini stealth burner with its standard extruder assembly. They included that lightweight CNC gantry, that somewhat step up hot end the CNC aluminum bed frame, but they included a super basic knockoff Bontech BMG gear for the extruder. 
what I find odd about this is Fizek sells a CNC machine palm gear that is a step up in design and only costs like nine, ten dollars. I really wish they would have sent a more budget hot end and included one of those gears in this machine. Moving back on the tool head, we've got a tool board mounted on there. This has a full on breakout board that all of your wiring connections for your fans, your hot end, your thermistor plug into. It also has an accelerometer built onto there for input shaper tuning and an umbilical plug for a single wire cable. It's not a single wire, it's actually a whole bunch of wires. It's a single cable as in wiring harness. You know what I mean. This made wiring up the tool head on here and running everything back to the back electronics box super easy, especially because of what's in the electronics box. You see, this kit came with the Fizect Catalyst board. That is a main board that is specifically purpose-built for the Voron Zero by this company. And overall, I kind of really like it. It is from the ground up designed and intended to be in this machine. So port locations, its orientation in the machine, it's all just really nice and neatly planned out. And it goes in well. And with the wiring that they provided and the motors they included and everything, it plugged in and made for a super easy job of getting a clean wiring job done here. That also has a built-in SBC to run Clipper right on the board. It's a clone of a Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4. They call it the CM68 and it runs perfectly fine and right out of the box was assembled on there and already had a heatsink on it too. However, my stepper drivers didn't have heatsinks on them. These are TMC2209, so they're quiet, capable stepper drivers and the wiring diagram for this machine shows there being heat sinks on them, but I didn't get any in my kit. I put my own on there uh, from my inventory, but it seems like they left them out of the box for me. Realistically, the only thing I don't kind of like about the electronics setup here is that umbilical. I'm not 100% sold on that. I would prefer to see a can connection and some strain relief because currently the wires are going off of the connectors at each end, the one on the tool board and the one on the main board for this machine are the attachment points. They did seem to pot the wires where they put some adhesive into the cavities for the wires, I assume for some strain relief so they're not wiggling around on the pins in there. But I do worry after a couple hundred hours is that connector moving back and forth all the time during a print gonna become a strain point that could be an issue. I don't know. I'm a big fan of quality strain relief and I'm not 100% sold on this. And I will say when I first fired this machine up, the firmware that was pre-installed on the SD card ready to run on this machine had the wrong config file in it. It actually, when I first powered it on, it tried to home and it just ground itself against the end stop because there is no end stop switch. The 0.2 uses sensorless homing. The config that they included with this thing didn't have sensorless homing set up. It was actually set up for end stops, which were not present. Another note, my kit came with a pair of extension cables, a network one and a USB one, but none of the printed parts, none of the panels had any provision for mounting them. I couldn't use them out of the box. I designed my own side skirt that they install into. That file is also available linked in the description. Now, since creating that, Rushmere 3D did point out to me that Fizect has a rear skirt that they can be installed into, but the skirt they provided me didn't have those provisions, and it's kind of buried on their GitHub page, not called out anywhere, but that's the part I need, so I didn't find it. I also don't think the rear is a good place for them. Yes, it hides the connections nicely, but the Z motor is really close there and it's not gonna be easy to route the cables to that rear skirt. I think the side's cleaner and easier to work with. One more thing I should probably note about the electronics in here, the motors in use are Fizek branded. They look and feel like decent quality components, but I will say, I don't know if it's a config issue. I have run into this on other machines before, but this thing has the worst motor whine I have ever heard while holding position. This is something that happens when power is applied to motors and they are held in position and that is all they're doing. It's just sitting there. And I don't know what it is with this machine, but it's exceptionally bad. It happens to be very similar to the tone that I hear from tinnitus all the time, 24 seven. So 
it's especially grating on me when there's a second source of it in the studio. I would love to fix this. If you have any ideas about what's causing it, let me know in the comments. With that CNC gantry in here, I ran the measuring resonance testing in Clipper and got these graphs back, which honestly pretty impressed me. This thing's recommending 15,000 plus millimeters per second acceleration rates, which I've been running it at like 10,000 in my limited testing and it's handling it perfectly fine. But overall, seriously, what do I think of this thing? It's a budget Voron 0.2 kit. At the price point it's going for, I think this is probably the budget kit to buy. Now, don't get me wrong. It suffers the exact same problems that I saw with the Seaboard kits where they're trying to put some more premium stuff in there, like that bed frame and that CNC gantry, but then cutting corners other places. It's got all plain steel hardware with a black oxide coating, which if you live in a really humid area could rust on you. The linear rails are also just steel. They are not stainless steel, but overall, I like the package that they've put together here for the price, except for the printed parts. So if you're considering building a Voron Zero, I think this might be a really good kit to go with and get your printed parts from the Print It Forward program, invest in a higher flowing hot end, and you might have yourself a pretty solid little workhorse machine. One final thing to discuss, print quality off of this machine. I'm not gonna talk about it. This is a Voron. I've said it before, I'll say it again. The quality of prints you're gonna get off of this is the, up to you. It's tuning the machine in, it's tuning your filaments in, and how you slice designs. There's nothing glaringly wrong with the hardware present here, so it's gonna be up to you to get the best print quality you can out of it. If you're interested in picking up one of these kits for yourself, please consider checking out the affiliate link in the description down below. It doesn't cost you anything more, but it does give me a little commission to help produce more videos like this in the future. All right, folks, that's going to wrap it up for this one. I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, maybe you'll enjoy my review of the Seabor 0.2 kit. Compare it to this one, see which one's right for you, or my tuning guide so you can tune this machine in once you get it built. All right, folks, that's going to wrap it up for this one. See ya!